Hello, so there is one question. Hello. Yes. Uh, so what is the significance of defining the table range? Our table range, see, first of all, the table range you define because then you don't have to go to the sheet to select the data. If I'm here, I can anytime say that pivot table and I can type in the range. Otherwise, I have to go to that sheet and I have to select the data. This is the first benefit. The second benefit is that uh, that that you you can right now this uh, the range we have created this is not using any formula right if i have to see that how this range is created i can go in the formula and i can see that this is basically a12 i6920 right but we sometimes you instead of creating this range we use see some functions also those functions what they do uh, you can actually pick the top 50% data or bottom 50% data using these name ranges. So anytime if the data is increased, it always, you know, it can pick top 70%, top 50% and that data it can supply to the pivot. We generally um, otherwise will not happen because then you have to see how many rows you have. And let's say you want the top 50 data, only the top 50% rows you want. So that is not possible because then you have to, uh, if the data is increased or decreased, you have to keep coming back to the pivot. As I said that uh, you just go and say all DP, all DP, and you say back. And this tells you about the, you know, that range. So every time you have to modify the range or you can go in the pivot table design and you can say change source data. And then this also tells you the, you know, the range. So there you have to every time modify the data. So that is another thing which i'll tell you later because uh, that requires some function knowledge uh, knowledge which which we haven't done yet but as of now i don't want to select i don't want to go to any sheet i just want to use the that range by writing the name that's why i've created here the name manager okay and not only this these these name managers you can even use in your excel functions also like for example, this is not a uh, though the lecture on the VLOOKUP or any other function. Suppose if you have here a data, employee IDs are there, and let's say you have their scorecard, right? So scorecard maybe scorecard one, scorecard two, scorecard three. So if you want to use these tables anywhere, maybe in VLOOKUP or in anywhere, you can go and use that. So what I can do, I can simply go and say that in the view tab, go and say grid line remove. I can go here and I can say that this is my table. Let's say table underscore, uh, maybe some bank data. So I can say TBL underscore bank address enter. And now I can see that if it is created or not, it is created. So when you press data, this data automatically gets selected, right? So if you have a VLOOKUP, let's say over here, you have this employee ID five and three like this. And now uh, we want to go and let's say find out the scorecard, any scorecard. Now, when I use the VLOOKUP, then I don't have to go there. I can simply type in table bank and you see it's automatically selected. You don't have to even freeze this. OK, so this table, this and the, the name manager you have created, this is as good as selecting a manual table. So once I go and drag this, you'll find the answer, right? This is how it is. In the pivot, I use this so that I don't have to select the data every time I create the pivot, that's it. And you can create, as I said, you can create these uh, multiple link managers. It's not that you, you are allowed to create only one. If you if you are using many pivots there, which are using the different different data points, then you can just go and give all of those a specific name right but otherwise if you do not want to if you want to do this manually you can do that as well which you uh, have been doing it before before i discussed the name manager we were selecting the manual you know the ranges so this is one of the benefits you don't have to go and select the data every time manually so now uh, we will go and talk about the last thing which is get pivot 
Now get pivot data is actually a pivot function. It's a formula. It's very nice formula. Uh, I'll first of all create a, a complicated pivot, which will give you a lot of information. Let's say uh, P range. I type the P range. So let's say I have here the uh, maybe item item name, and then let's say we have a date, right? So I have the date. I'll put the item after the date, so uh, you can move this also, right? And uh, then uh, we group this. So let's say I want to group this to uh, maybe. Uh, okay, I I don't want to do anything. Okay, let let me keep this as it is. And instead of the item, item list is very long. I prefer something else. Maybe. Uh, okay, I I'll go with the zone. Right, like this, and the zone. Let's say I have a cost price, which I want, right? And then I want maybe the selling price also. Now this is a pivot you have created, right? Now sometimes what happens when you create the pivot, you like to use those pivot values in your another maybe a tabular form of a you know a data. I mean, for example, here or maybe in some another sheet you like to do this thing you say that okay i have a date here okay 2019 and then i have the dates here right so let's say using here all the three year dates maybe i'm creating some some sort of you know a table and here i like to show the east wise data this is not a pivot as you can see right and the north data let's say only the two data points now the thing is if you have to use the pivot values, pivot values means the values which I want to find out here for the east and the north, right? Those values, first of all, should be available in the pivot. Otherwise, you can't use that option. Now, here I can simply go and use the get pivot formula. See how it is going to give you the value. Now, if let's say you do not know the get pivot, then I think it will be uh, difficult for us to find out the dates, right? And one more thing, uh, I want to ungroup this and we want to remove the subtotal. Okay, do not show the subtotal. And I give this, uh, maybe this, yeah, right? So now you see that here I have a date and here I have a zoom, right? I'm not saying that using some Excel formula, you can't do this. Well, then we have to see how we basically are going to, you know, create the arrangement because this is not going to be a direct formula. Maybe I can use the VLOOKUP index, you know, such formulas we can use. And we can see that, you know, this like the date is there. So maybe I will go here and I say that concatenate this with this zone, right? And I told you yesterday, these all are, all, all are blank, so we can generate the repeat label option here, right? So these are the things, you know, we, you, you have to think, repeat all the items. Once the date is allowed, we will go and drag the formula like this. So now in this way, we will have here a unique combination of a date and zone, right? Like the East 1st January is there, and the next day is East 2nd January. So same way, then when you go and use the, you know, here, the data, you go and concatenate this, you go and concatenate this with this, right? To make a unique combination. And then you say that you want the data from this to this because you need the cost price. So you go and pick the fifth column, isn't it? Right, so I mean, you're not saying there is a end to the world if, if you do not know the get pivot, but instead of doing all this, instead of doing all this, I'm not removing all this. We'll simply come in the pivot and in the pivot, pivot table analyze, go here in the option. Okay, say that generate get pivot data. You have to click on this. Make sure that it is check marked. Now, once this is check marked, I'm going to be simply select the, the data. Now, what do you need? Do you need the cost price or selling price? First of all, this is the important thing. If I need the cost price, then I go and select this cost price and a very long formula get pivot will be generated here as you can see, right? So basically what it does, it actually starts the range C3, your pivot is starting from C3, right? 
uh, under this formula and, and it says that i'm using the zone east and the date which is this one first january 2019 right now you if you look at this carefully these are called the variables which means that these are the things which actually will should change but because of the double quote this will not change so if i go and drag this formula here like this you know i'll always get the east data for the year for the, for the date first january 2019 however i want the date here to be changed it's actually the second of january isn't it so this is what we now need to figure it out these values should not be here coming here as a constant okay it's a very simple thing so when you go here first of all what you do you go and remove the double quotes from here right so you say that um it is not the east but it is this cell which is called k6 in this way when i drag the formula down your get pivot will pick not the east but the north and then south and west right and left to right you have to make sure k should not change left to right east has to be east only same way you will go and remove this constant date because right now get pivot data created this for you but then you say that okay my data actually is this date which is l5 right again when i move down l5 should not change to l6 so we have simply removed those constants and we have put the formula here rest we did not change anything here so how this function get pivot now works when you drag this function like this you see that you automatically starts getting the value so there's no need to go and you know use those these type of vlookups you don't have to do anything right so if you go here if i press f2 now get pivot is picking the north in the 1st of january so do we have here the north yes we have remember when i when i said equals to i used actually this cost price sum of cp if i use this one it will be now selling price right so under the north 4th january i think if you see there is no north here you can see that right so such things we can handle using the if error also okay I simply say that if the function returns the error then what you have to do so basically it picks the values from the pivots directly for you provided your pivot should have those values now if i remove the dates from here obviously my pivot will not be able to get pivot will not be able to work because here i need these two things so your pivot must have these two things right this is how it any time if we have to use the pivot values maybe we are creating some dashboard a tabular form of a data like this you know where we just want to show the numbers we can go and use this option get pivot data 